Welcome back to the Atomic Comic Pile. Now, in our first episode, we covered the first comic book, New Fun Number no. 1, from 1935, which was published by the company National Allied Publications, which was founded in 1934. Now, in 1937, there was a company called Detective Comics that put out Detective Comics Number no. 1, and they were purchased the following year, in 1938, by National Allied Publications. And that's when they put out Action Comics number one. You can see here with Superman. Well, today we're going to be covering the very first comic books I ever read. Secret Origins of the DC Superheroes. So we've got Superman from Action Comics. We've got Batman who would debut in Detective Comics. Now there was another company called Quality Comics that launched in 1937 and they put out the character Plastic Man. And this company was bought by, well, National Allied Publications, which, is, which had bought uh, Detective Comics. They then changed their name to Detective Comics, or DC for short, and they bought uh, Quality Comics in 1956. Then there was another company in 1938 called All American Comics. They put out Wonder Woman, The Flash, Green Lantern, Hawkman, and The Atom. And that company, All American Comics, was purchased by DC in 1946. And there was another company in 1940 called Fawcett Publications, and they put out Captain Marvel, Shazam. And that company was, uh, stopped using the character Captain Marvel in 1952 after basically 12 years of a legal battle with DC. And the copyright, it lapsed on the character and Marvel Comics trademarked it with a new character of their own in 1967. Now, in order to retain that copyright, Marvel Comics needs to publish a Captain Marvel comic every two years, none of which have been successful. That's why they have so many different characters named Captain Marvel. Now, DC Comics licensed the Captain Marvel character from their original copyright holders, but they weren't using the name Captain Marvel anymore. They had to rename him Shazam. And that's how they promoted the character, as the name Shazam. They even had a television series in the 1970s. But in 1994, DC just outright bought the character completely. And they officially changed his name to Shazam in 2011 and his entire Marvel family to the Shazam family. So let's get to this book right here. This cover is illustrated by Neil Adams. As you can see here, it's first printing, August 1976, so this was in my house since I was two years old. Here's all the characters we'll be covering. So we start with Superman. This is the original one-page origin story by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster from Action Comics No. 1, June 1938, and it has been expanded into a 17-page origin story written by E. Nelson Bridwell, penciled by Carmine Infantino, and inked by Kurt Swan. This was originally published in The Amazing World of Superman, the official Metropolis edition from 1973, which was a 68-page black-and-white tabloid-sized, or 11 by 17-inch, one-shot special. And it is in this book, in color, for the first time. And they've added to his origin that he was Superboy before leaving Smallville. Well, I've said goodbye to all my friends. I'll return later for my trophies and robots when I have a place to keep them. I love this little chef's hat. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird! It's a plane! Does anyone get that excited about a bird or a plane? And that brings us to Batman. Uh, now this is interesting. Combine the intellect of Sherlock Holmes with the compassion of a Buddha and the relentlessness of a shark. The kind of sea beast that's frightening, even after it's lying on a dock riddled with rifle bullets. Is that what fishermen do? So we've got the two-page origin story reprinted from Batman issue number one, which came out a year after that character's debut in Detective Comics number 27. 
It's written by Bill Finger, it's drawn by Bob Kane, and the backgrounds are done by Sheldon Moldoff. I must be a creature of the night. Black. Terrible. Blah. And this is followed by the origin of Batman from Batman issue number 47, written by Bill Finger, drawn by Bob Kane, and Charles Paris. That brings us to Wonder Woman, who debuted in All-Star Comics number 8 in January of 1942. She followed that with Sensation Comics number 1, and then Wonder Woman number 1. And that is reprinted here. It's written by William Moulton Marston, under the pen name Charles Moulton, and the art is by Harry S. Peter. Wait, who are you? Explain! You wouldn't understand. I'm just a woman. Char Ted. Bad Lee. Re cover. Manu script. Smith Sonian. Archiala Gist. Unconquerable. Con Cur. Plun Dirt. Here we see Wonder Woman working for three days and nights on a healing ray in her laboratory while wearing a bikini and a choker collar. This Amazonian's name is Fat Sis, the two-ton grease heap. Once Princess Diana takes off this little domino mask, her mother finally recognizes who she is. And this is a story from Wonder Woman issue 206 from 1973, written by Gary Bates, penciled by Don Heck, and inked by Vince Coletta. Suffering Sappho, thunderbolts of Jove. Thanks, Wonder Woman. That Poe would have mashed me into soul food. I fought a duel almost to the death because she challenged me. Shades of Pluto by Hera by Jaga. Hola. Who knew Wonder Woman was Spanish? So we got Flash Comics number one from January of 1940. It's written by Gardner Fox and drawn by Harry Lampert. It stars the gray-haired college student in a three-piece suit, Jay Garrick, who can't get a date with Joan because he won't put his mind to football. And he gets the powers of the Flash by inhaling fumes from hard water. Hard water is uh, water containing mineral elements like calcium and magnesium. So take your vitamins and you too can run eight times the speed of light. I'm going to help Dad in his atomic bombarder scientific researches. Now we've got a reprint of Showcase issue number four from 1956. It begins the Silver Age of comics with the introduction of Barry Allen's Flash. It's written by Robert Kaniger. It's penciled by Carmine Infantino, and it's inked by Joe Kubert, and it is the best art in the entire book. Showcase issue one was Firefighters. Showcase two was Native Americans. Showcase three was the Navy Frogmen. Then we've got The Flash here in issue number four. Uh, issue five were, were Detectives. Uh, issue six and seven were Challengers of the Unknown by Jack Kirby. These were athletes that I, I think later on became the source material for the Fantastic Four. And then Showcase Issue 8, they bring the Flash back because that's probably when the letters came in from the readers and they said, great, superheroes are back. Let's keep them. And you can see here, Barry Allen is actually reading Jay Garrick Flash comics from the Golden Age. Now, the first guy the Flash fights is the Turtle Man, who already knows about the Flash, knows his powers, knows his secret identity. Uh, but this is the Flash's debut. Where did he get all this info from? Barry Allen's nephew, Wally West, uh, visited his uncle at work and was also struck by lightning and washed in the exact same chemicals as his uncle Barry and became Kid Flash in 1959, which was a sidekick character like Robin for Batman. And Wonder Woman had Wonder Girl, Aquaman had Aqualad, Green Arrow had Speedy, and those were the original Teen Titans. Wally West then became The Flash in 1986 after his uncle Barry died. Now Barry's grandson, Bart Allen, becomes a character called Impulse in 1994, and then he became The Flash in 2006. And he was The Flash that was on the show Smallville. 
Then a Chinese-American woman named Avery Ho became The Flash in 2017. Now, Barry Allen here, he's The Flash from the Super Friends cartoon and the John Wesley Ship Show from the early 90s and the Ezra Miller current movie character. And now we've got uh, the Green Lantern from All-American Comics number 16 from 1940. This is the character Alan Scott. He was created and drawn by Martin Nodell, and he was fleshed out and written by Bill Finger. And his weakness is wood. Then in 1959, we got Showcase number 22, bringing a new Green Lantern. This is written by John Broom, penciled by Gil Kane, and inked by Joe Gill. This is the Hal Jordan version of the character, and his only requirement to become the Green Lantern was to have no fear, like a psychopath. And his weakness is the color yellow. And now we have Hawkman, who debuted in Flash Comics number one, written by Gardner Fox and drawn by Dennis Neville, possibly inspired by the Hawkman from Flash Gordon's newspaper comics that started to appear in 1934. Khufu, the pharaoh that commissioned the Great Pyramid of Giza, is reincarnated in the body of medieval weapons collector Carter Hall, who then uses the anti-gravity power of Ninth Metal, now called Nth Metal, to emulate the hawk god Anubis, even though Anubis was dog-headed and is his enemy in the comic. It's weird. Now, his wife would embody the reincarnated form of Khufu's wife and become Hawk Girl. And in 1961, we get a new version of Hawkman and Hawk Girl from Brave and the Bold, issue number 34, written by Gardner Fox and drawn by Joe Kubert. And the art is awesome. We've trailed a dangerous criminal named Biff from our planet to yours. He has the strange power to alter his shape to duplicate another man, bird, or animal. I, I guess birds aren't animals. It kind of sounds like manimal. Here we've got the Green Arrow, who first appeared in More Fun Comics number 73 from 1941, the same issue with Aquaman's debut. Issues 1 through 6 were titled New Fun, and we covered New Fun in the first episode of this show. Now this is their origin from More Fun Comics number 89 from 1943, written by Joseph Samichin, penciled by Cliff Young, and inked by Steve Brody. Liberty Limericks, said an acrobat named Ali Oop, I'm constantly telling my troop, pledge all you can raise for war bonds these days, and Hitler will be in the soup. And here is the revamped origin of the Green Arrow and his sidekick Speedy from Adventure Comics number 256 from 1959, written by Franz Herron and drawn by Jack Kirby. That brings us to The Atom from All-American Comics number 19 from 1940, written by Bill O'Connor, penciled by Ben Clinton, and inked by Leonard Sanson. He gets a costume in the next issue and later on gets super strength, but here he's just a short guy that learns how to box. And here is the new version of The Atom from Showcase number 34 from 1961, written by Gardner Fox, penciled by Gil Kane, and inked by Murphy Anderson. And this is where I learned how to tell the difference between stalagmites and stalactites. And here we are, Captain Marvel, Shazam, from Wiz Comics number 2 from 1940, written by Bill Parker and drawn by C.C. Beck. Weird. Wacky. Cool. I want that globe. I want that book. I want that money. And finally, Plastic Man, from Police Comics number 1 from 1941, Written and drawn by Jack Cole. 